Hello, and welcome to episode five of Battle Driven. Uh, we got uh, myself, Dan, and Jeff here, and we're actually just going to do an episode of just the two of us talking about some stuff that uh, we think could use some talking about. Uh, Jeff, what did you have in mind? So, <clears throat> sounds super sweet, just the two of us. <laughs> uh, we've got some caster stagnation, mm-hmm. uh, which leads into ADR. Yep. And then we've got tournament observations from this past weekend. Yep, yep. Over at Flagship Comic Games. And mm-hmm. then we've got some Theory Machine talk. Okay. Kind of like on what it is and when it goes wrong. Okay. Um, so, uh, which one did you want to start with? Let's uh, go into the tournament observations. Uh, okay. How did you do this weekend? Um, so, actually, what was really cool about this weekend was that uh, Jeff and Dan came from Poughkeepsie all the way up to my neck of the woods in Connecticut, coming to uh, Flagship Comics and Games for a little... Uh, 50 points team roller. Um, what was really cool about this tournament was the fact that there was no DNC, um, which are divide and conquer for people who don't get the anagram. Um, and that just means that you are not required to play your lists. And that was actually really different. Um, I was fortunate enough to uh, win the tournament. Um, how'd you do, Jeff? I went uh, two and two. Yeah? Yep. What was, your, uh, what was your goals coming into the tournament? Win the tournament. Oh, I mean, other than that. Oh. Um, play some games. Okay. Yep. Any other one? Um, not really. Okay. Should I have had other um, goals? I was just trying to get two out of three so you weren't failing. Oh. What was my third one? I, whatever one you made up. Oh, okay. I didn't make up three goals. Yeah, that, that's that's why I was trying to get a third one out of you. Oh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> so I you're mean, one out of cool two right new now. Dudes. Yeah, there we go. I mean, like, that was fun, but it's not, like, a goal. <sighs> okay. Sorry, buddy. Is uh, that your goal? No. Well, Who'd then you why, why does that have to be my goal? Just, 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 <laughs> You're calling me out already. We're not even recording for, like, ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that, right? <laughs> um, so, uh, actually, I'm going to do a little uh, a pre-story. Um, that was on... Uh, this Saturday, which we're recording on Sunday now, so it was yesterday. Um, Thursday, I actually did the exact opposite of what Jeff did. I drove down to Poughkeepsie and uh, with the promise of a bunch of people at the store and uh, a bunch of games and whatnot, and uh, nobody showed up. So, in the spirit of competition, I played Jeff in a game. Uh, it was Terminus versus Saren, because I'm all about that Cricks. Mm-hmm. And um, the wager, because I wanted to make it interesting, was um, pretty much whoever wins... Get a big dick meta guy status, mm-hmm. and so pretty much it was a lose lose no matter what. No, I won. You, well, uh, I won by losing. Yeah, because I won. Yeah. Um, really long Very game. Nice. It was really good on both sides. Um, it ended up uh, I put a bit of pressure on Jeff. Correct me if I'm wrong. Obviously, like you do, mm-hmm. and um, I put a bit of scenario pressure on Jeff. Jam in the zone pretty much the whole game. Came down to a turn where he was clearing out the zone to to swap the pressure to me, and uh, just could not hit a series of sixes. Yeah, it was sad. Um, first World Legion problems it seems to be one of the only ways I've seen the Saren lose against Cricks is when they miss a bunch of sixes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I ended up winning that game. Uh, we played the Morton Ever Saren matchup, but there was nothing on the line, and I got royally diced. But it didn't help that I was making some pretty bad mistakes. But if that's you why we play. The dice would not have mattered at all. Oh, uh, yeah, it helps. I guess. So. Well, your terminal velocity is pretty good when you cast it. <laughs> that's what the big boys say. Um, but uh, I'm still going to be looking into playing more Nebra. I think she's really cool. Um, and she definitely does something different, obviously. But that's nothing new. Tom Guan has made her very popular. Oh, yeah. Um, so going back to the tournament. Um, we were talking about tournament observations. So, Jeff, I'm going to have you go first. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I mean, I didn't really observe anything new. I just brought a oh. uh, standard troll ball <laughs> pairing. So you been you brought your usual pairing that you've been playing for about a year and a half now, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Of uh, Calandra Elemental Communion and Runes of War? Yep. Both uh, one's Tier 3, one's Tier 4, correct? Yeah, yeah Calandra's Tier 3. These were the lists you brought to TempleCon? Mm-hmm. TempleCon and, Did like, you... every other tournament ever. That's fair. Um, okay. 
Uh, I did look something up in the rule book, though, afterwards. What's that? When a smaller base model slams a larger base model. Yeah. Uh, it turns out what I thought happened was completely wrong. What's that? Um, I thought the larger base model would not be knocked down. But it is? But it is. Now we know. And you get minus two on your attack roll. I had no idea. Because, oh, I didn't know that part. Yeah, see, I've never seen that before. Mm. Um, but uh, so you, you had no observations? Not particularly. I mean, I made mistakes. Sure. Um, and it was, it's like little things, like uh, members of the Creel Stone being like uh, an inch or two away from like where they should be. Okay, for like stuff for like the self sack and stuff. Uh, no, just like general positioning to like keep them uh, alive a little better. Okay. Uh, my first game uh, ended where I kind of ran out of resources and I had to. Uh, my last model in my Krill Stone was my unit attachment, and so yep. basically I had to make a choice between playing to win and playing to not lose. Okay. So, in the middle flag incursion, I had uh, two war beasts around it. Uh, yeah. W- one a little dinged up; it taken like two points of damage. Sure. And then um, another one was it taken uh, close to two thirds damage. Okay. But so um, I had one member of my Krill Stone unit alive, being the UA, since the stone can't promote to him. Yeah. And so. What it was is basically, I was at four points. Yeah. And uh, Shane was at three. Okay. So, <clears throat> I had to either keep that last member of the Krill Stone next to the, the middle flag to contest. Uh-huh. In case he cleared it. Cleared the two beasts off of it. Sure. And then... But if I did that, I wouldn't have been able to win because... On my turn, the guy, I would have no more pieces to contest his left flag, which would bring him up to five the same time as me. And then on his turn, he oh. just contests the flag. So yep. I had to run the last member of my Creel Stone in between. So I knew he wouldn't have enough attacks to clear all three models. Sure. Like he, at best, really should only get the two. Okay. So... Basically, I had to, I had to make the choice uh, okay. between a trying to win and trying to not lose, and unfortunately, okay. it did not work out. That's definitely an interesting thing way to to look at some games. Yeah, um, I personally, um, I gotta say that I did not have an easy game all tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, probably the only game I didn't feel like great about. So there were a couple moments that, like, it's always nice to get good dice, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you never you never feel bad, but, like, there are certain moments where you look at your opponent and you're just like, that wasn't supposed to happen. Oh, I know that. Uh, so I was playing uh, uh, Ben from uh, the New London area. He's a PG for Sarge's Comics. Sure. And he was playing uh, Xerxes 2, and I played Gatsby 2 every round because there was no DNC. And uh, it, it's a favorable matchup for me. That's um, cool. Battle engine caster, my feet is very, um, he's very susceptible to it. And um, it was a spread out scenario, it was recon. So, like, the, the, the dice, I mean, the, 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 the matchup wasn't in his favor. I'm not, Yet, what was that? So, I'm not so sure recon is really a spread out scenario. Uh, yeah. It's very rare to see the outside flags come into play very often. But with Gatsby 2 and the teleports, it that's, becomes a problem. That's fair, I suppose. I, I would agree that what I'm saying is a corner case, because mm-hmm. there's only a couple of casters in the game with teleport or things sure. like it, um, but it's definitely something to consider. Fair enough. Um, so I, we're playing the game, right, and he has two min units of incendiarii, mm-hmm. and um, I engage them with blood witches, Pretty good. and he sits there and he's like, huh, you need, uh, if I take a free strike, you need a 13 to kill them. Very Sorry. unlikely. Yeah, I, I like those odds. So he walks away, and I roll a 13. So that kills one guy. Yep. And then he walks away from another one, and I roll a 13 and kill him. And I was like, 
Uh, there you go. Like, it's one of those moments, like, you had a plan in your head, mm-hmm. like, oh, man, how am I going to deal with those guys? Okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. If that doesn't work, plan B, plan C. And then something like that happens, and you're like, okay, it's cool, but, you know, I want a good game, too. Yeah. I understand dice are dice. I just, it was already a bad matchup for him. Yeah. And the incendiary, I get him too even, just because the amount of infantry they can light on fire and kill and stuff like that. And for me to just roll two boosted 13s, it's not likely. Like, I didn't walk away from the game being like, oh, yeah, no, I told, everything worked out, everything went according to plan. Yeah. Um, and actually, the, the, the final game against uh, Matt Fay, uh, I believe he's, he plays at the Temple Store. Yeah, he plays at Temple. Okay. I just wanted to get that. I want to make sure I got that right. Um, he was playing Ron Hyperion. And um, I actually, after the game, I, I thought about it, and I wasn't super sure if Gatsby 2 was actually the right drop. My other drop was Gorshay 3 with the Kraken and the two units Cav. And um, I just want to go on the record and say that uh, I vouched for Gorshay 3. You did. You did. I asked you who you thought I should play, and you said Gorshay 3. Um, and then I realized that I was 3-0 with Gatsby 2 that day. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm chips in. Yeah, I mean, if, if you can play with a Tonka truck, you might as well, right? Right? I mean, how many other tournaments am I going to be able to play with Gatsby 2? Two, four times in a row? Probably zero. Probably zero. Um, so uh, we're playing, and I'm like, man, this is actually really bad. He's going to crit, remove all my dudes. I can't feet. This is going to be miserable. He shoots round one and doesn't crit. Yeah. Kills like kills six dudes, obviously. <laughs> but doesn't that crit. That might be worse. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Now I'm like, oh, okay. I had six bullets in the chamber. Um, and then... The next turn, I, I'm jamming, jamming like I do. And uh, all of a sudden, he goes, and everything's tied up. And he starts killing some stuff, and then he gets near the end of his activation. Activates Ron. Uh, like, pretty much, I think there was just Iris engaged with a raider? Something stupid like that. Mm-hmm. And that's the only model he has left to activate after Ron. And obviously, Hyperion has polarity shield on him the whole time. Yeah. Otherwise, he's going to die. Um, and, uh, he goes and chain blasts some witches, and then all of a sudden it, like, scatters, but it doesn't hit the blood hag. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, no, I didn't kill the blood hag. So, I ran with one blood witch, charged that blood witch with the blood hag, um, hit the dispel Mm -hmm. on her dagger, on the Hyperion, and then feet, parasite, dark shroud, one round of the Hyperion. From then on, the game was kind of in my favor, mm-hmm. and uh, I ended up winning on scenario. Um, but like, uh, it's it's you know it's one of those games where that's that's what I like about this game so much is that like everybody always looks at the table, and even myself for a very very long time, I had the card game mentality where um, just scoop. Yeah. If you just scoop, go to the next game, screw it. You know what he's going to do. Mm-hmm. He's going to do it no matter what. Just scoop, go to the next game. But with the, with the way that this game is designed, it's – I don't want to say it's a bit easier, but it is definitely easier to mess up. I think or it is even, easier to mess up. I'll or even just, just, just make a lapse in judgment, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know, he just didn't think about that at the start of his turn. And it's just it just takes that small moment of everything's fine, go about your turn, and then it's too late. I mean, so right now, like, magic tournaments are huge. Sure. Like, we're talking, like, 700 dudes in a room. These things are going on for, like, mul- they're spanning, like, multiple days now. They've completely re- reworked the format. Yep. And so, even at that, something like War Machine is still a crazy endurance test, it is. You're, you're looking at these tournaments that, like, they can only be, like, even a five-round tournament can end up being, like, 10, 11 hours. Yep. And a lot of the time you're standing. And, My knees have exploded at this tournament. Yeah. Um, you're standing the entire time, pretty much. Like, while off, sometimes there are chairs available. Like, yeah. Uh, it's it's really hard to play from a chair. Yep. Oh, it's impossible. Uh, 
being able to stand over a table is what's going to allow you to eyeball distances and like get a better feel of what your opponent is doing. The number of times I've ended my turn and then immediately gotten up from my chair. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, what's happening? Like, yeah. So, <clears throat> and it, it, there's something you said for like games lasting significantly longer. Yep. Like you, there's a decompress time when you're playing a match where it's yep. like you're playing two or three games. You have like you're like two minutes of like sideboarding and shuffling and all that stuff and. Uh -huh. Those little breaks do add up. They do. Not to mention, like, um, all of my games, I had, there was probably less than a half an hour in our combined clock. Mm -hmm. So that, that, there's something to be said for that, too. Literally just being able to sit down and, like you said, decompress your War Machine game, not even the card game side. Like, think about what you could have done better. Yeah. And then it's immediately into the next game. Yeah, and that's something that's a little new to you, right? Like you've yeah, definitely. You've been on the lookout for your casters that kind of end those games quickly. Definitely. That's been something I had to get accustomed to extremely quickly. Which was hilarious to me because for the longest time, I was, of, I, I was part of that, that mass of people that was just like, you know, I'm not saying Crix is an easy mode. I, I think it clicks for me really well. Mm -hmm. I like playing, you know, 50 plus dude lists. Sure. I think that, that it fits my skill set very well. Um, I don't mind making 20 attacks a turn. It doesn't bother me. Um, 20 plus. Um, I love that making that many attacks a turn. It's great. Um, but uh, what you call it. But it's, it's definitely an endurance test. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know? um, like I was saying earlier, I mean... People keep talking about how, you know, oh, I, I played Crix and I just steamrolled this guy. And I I didn't steamroll anybody that tournament. And so when <clears throat> you were we were playing our Terminus Siren game, you made single-digit tags pretty much every turn up until turn, like, f four or five due mm -hmm. to Siren's Blightbringer, the feet, all that jazz. Yep. And something like that uh, really... I think can grind at you and be really frustrating. Sure. Because you're you're bringing all these models, but you don't get to apply them the way you want to. And that's just I think something a lot of non Crix players aren't really thinking about due due largely to the pervasiveness of Crix and how if you don't have a plan for it, you will just lose. That's true. I mean, we can agree, like, we, we, you know, we could throw some numbers out and stuff like that. Like, if you don't do exactly what you did, like, what, three, four guys take a heavy off the table? Mm -hmm. Pretty easily. Yeah. And this, this Terminus is not a debuff caster. Like, I'm not crippling grasping you, I'm not, like, doing anything. I mean, Mechanothralls are off two on Angelius's. Yeah. It's yeah, just it's hitting, brutal. that's all. You know, when, when seven charge, one of them should hit. Like, mm -hmm. so, and then you're just, oh, no. Yeah, any as every aspect you take out is an order of activation issue. It just adds one more layer to the game that I have to play. And that's, um, I mean, what, what's really cool about that, I think this will be the end of our first topic, but uh, mm -hmm. is, uh, like you said before, um, looking, when you start a, a round in a tournament and you're, you, you're sitting across the table from a Crix player and you just see a sea of dudes, it's exhausting. When you look, you're like, I had to kill pretty much all of those models. Mm -hmm. And like that. a lot of them multiple times. Exactly. That could be a really big deterrent. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't answers. There's always answers. Of course. But when I come to the table as the Crix player, let's say, and I can say, like, what's the thing that's killing the most infantry? If I can take that off the table, do I pretty much run this game? So I'm kind of walking up with a secondary win objective. Mm-hmm. Where you got to play the game fair. Sure. And some people don't like that. Um, do I think, like it. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I think uh, Crick's into like the Haley 2 with Stormwell matchup is a pretty good example of that. Exactly. Um, you know, and as the Crick's player, that's when I have to zag when he zigs. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe, maybe I get cute, I bring Bane Riders. Maybe I, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff I can do. But the, I have to answer that then. He's, yeah. he's the ball's in his court. 
um, which you know I'm I'm totally down for. I never I never want it to be a sixty forty every time in my favor. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be cool. Like don't get me wrong, but uh, it's super cool. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Coming from you, yeah. <sighs> that pairing is such a fucking nightmare. Yeah, man. What are you doing against eleven lights? Fucking nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Oh man. Um, okay, so uh, what was our next topic? Uh, so next up, we had theory machine and kind of the failings that can sometimes happen when you discuss theory machine without any table experience to back it up. Sure. So let's dive right into that. Jeff, have you ever theory machined a list before? I have. How do you do that? Uh, <clears throat> so generally, you start with a problem. Okay. And you're attempting to build a solution for it. Sure. So generally, you're going to be using your past experiences to say, well, this model answers this and this, and there are these problems, so we're going to attempt to solve them with this. Yep. So can you give me an example? So an example of... Uh, some theory machine would be uh, like <clears throat> me taking a list I've never played before. So something like uh, Grim 2. I've played yep. him maybe once. My boy. So every time I sit in War Room and I look, I'm like, well, what pieces look great for him? And due to the way his feet works you're generally going to be looking at something like guns. So, yeah. like, all right, well, when you have a lot of guns, what problems are presented? Normally, it's things that are going to have reach, and they're going to be able to run to engage you. Set jam. Yeah, or they're going to have stealth. So what can I bring to deal with that? And sure. I think you had an excellent uh, example of this in your list, where you brought a Creelstone water module, I believe. Yeah. Yep. And I thought that was excellent. Thank you. Something like that that isn't really dependent on Grimm for anything. Sure. Like, those two units just work together really well. So you have this little 13-point... Or did you min your stone? I min my stone, yeah. Yeah, so you have, like, a 12-point module that can sit in any zone against yep. pretty much any army. So, uh, using that example specifically... Um, that was a list I was very proud of. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, I believe it was uh, Bomber, Bomber, No Impaler, uh, which like blew a lot of people away. They're like, why don't you have an Impaler? It seems like an auto-include. I found this was kind of an example of good theory machine. Mm-hmm. And then I'll, I'll go into what my other list was going to be, which is bad theory machine. Um, so I, I didn't feel like, well, number one, I didn't own 11 lights. So this was the time when Jeff had really started grinding away at Calandra. And uh, I was like, man, that list looks really cool. But for the meantime, I still needed an answer for Cricks. And uh, I didn't really feel like a lot of the lists would do very well, um, against, let alone against like things that were already good against trolls, like, say, the P. Denny gun line. Mm-hmm. That was a nightmare for trolls. So and- uh, Cricks at this point was kind of in a transformative stage, I want to sure. say. Um, they were starting to introduce, like, more armor elements. Yep. Like, we were starting to see a lot more Kraken and, like, more Nebra and stuff. So your typical Crix answers weren't quite pulling their weight when you're talking about killing, like, 40, 50 infantry and then a Colossal. Yep. So that was that was problem number one for me was I need to be able to kill probably, I'd say, 30 to 40 dudes. After that, you can kind of control the game. Because you're back to fair. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then the other outlier was, can I kill a Kraken? So uh, it was Bomber, Bomber, uh, Burrowers, uh, full unit of Nis, mm-hmm. and um, uh, the, the Max Warders, Minstone, Burrowers, yep. I think that was the whole list. And the whole idea was that I just wanted little modules that moved on their own. Uh, and Oh, and uh, a Ruin Bear, I believe. Uh, yeah, fill yeah. the um, Maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I went back and forth on that guy. Um, mortality, I, I personally feel still to this day, is one of the best spells in the game. 
chair. You've um, come back a little bit. You you used to say it was the best spell bar none. Yeah. I'm not and then, sure. Uh, I agree with that assessment. And then I started playing Cricks. And uh, <laughs> anyways, um, so uh, I would I would say probably in Trolls. It's up there with like uh, like purification. I can I can go with best spell in trolls. Um, especially what it does for the faction. Yeah. So more times than not, we need to buff, and that's really one of our only. De- I think it's one of our only debuffs. Or yeah, one of your um, debuffs. Trolls. No, Pgrim has uh, mark for death. Ah yes yes yes, and his feet. Yeah. Um. Okay, so like it, it was just it was such a big deal to be able to um. Get those rat ten burrowers, get uh, on the feet turn with mark the target aiming, uh, and mortality. Like they just they blew up almost anything on the other side of the table. Yeah. Um, it was insanity. Um, and uh, just realistically, Gatsby two was a nightmare for trolls before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It wasn't great, and that list just answered it so well. Oh, I love watching you play against the sixties too. Yeah, um, it's just the the Bane Thralls come up, the Bane Knights come up, the Burrowers kill the Bane Knights, the Nis kill the uh, the Bane Thralls. They can't hide behind the clouds because of Hunter. They can't hide in stealth because of Mage Sight. I mean, the Warders sit in the zone. They're not easily killed without applying Parasite. Mm-hmm. Um, Did you have that backwards? Did you put Nis on Bane Knights? Nope, because uh, I with aiming. Mm-hmm. And feet, I reliably hit them and kill them with the slug guns. Oh, okay. And then uh, I would drop the mage sight on the stealth bane thralls and uh, shoot them with the nis. But ba- mage sight is battle group only. Is it? Yeah. I cheated like a mofo. All right. <laughs> All right, man. That list is so good, especially when you cheat. Son Anyways. Of a bitch. Yeah, I don't play trolls anymore. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, you know, it still works. Yeah, yeah. The two, game, the two game, bombers the, cleans up. Exactly. Balls. We didn't even talk about that before either. Um, I mean, it, the game that I'm thinking of, where I was cheating, uh, they they actually walked up into five, anyways. Okay. But it doesn't matter. I'm a cheaty, cheaty bastard. You are. Um, anybody who knows me, this is nothing new. Uh, I think I think the number one phrase, if you're counting, if you're like a crazy person and counting, pretty sure the number one thing Jeff says right now is, uh, "Raiku, you can't do that." <laughs> um. Yep. Anywho, uh, so looking at what you had to do, like I said before, can I kill a kraken? Mortality uh, plus feet plus burrowers plus uh, the two bombers plus the full either fullness CRA or two five man CRAs. I did the math out and it kills a kraken from full to dead pretty easily. Yeah. Um, I don't know about an armor buffed kraken, but that didn't really matter because the fact really exists. Exactly. So that, plus the fact that um, even if I don't kill it in one round, mm-hmm. it's pretty much dead. Yeah. Like, they don't, usually they're not bringing it, it maybe one mechanic. Mm-hmm. So at most, he's healing six boxes. I, I played Whelps in the list instead of, that's what the change I did. Played Whelps instead of Moses. Uh, Rune Bearer, sorry. Um, and uh, would remove the Fury off the bombers on feet turn. Mm-hmm. And that was the big deal. Because cool. I get two full activations out of my bombers, mm-hmm. two turns of full activations, and all the fully boosts got me to even, and even after that, I still had more whelps. Um, but that was a good example of good theory machine because it could deal with the two things that I was having issues with. So what's bad theory machine? So more times than not, when people are making bad theory machine. It is due to the fact that they kind of look at the matchup in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. They don't really look at how a game's going to play out throughout the whole thing. So like you were saying earlier, this thing's going to deal with that. So usually people talking... Uh, absolutes. Absolutes, thank you. Um, and that, that really doesn't happen with dice games. Yeah. And uh, so I've seen people that make legitimate plans hoping they roll sixes or sevens, which aren't bad. But if you're basing your entire plan to win this game on that, that's probably not going to be a good good game. It, the plan might be good enough to get you through a game. Yeah. But if you're looking to win a tournament or a convention or something, your plan needs to work 
in like four, five, six, seven, eight games. So my whole thing is, is that if we're theory machining, you literally made this list to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Why are you going to leave it on a pretty unlucky roll? I just that that always bothered me. Um, you know, planning assassination on nines. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's not good. Like, that's not good. Um, I mean, I might, but I have like th- two re rolls. Really, it helps when everything's so, boostable and yeah. uh, you get to re roll it, and you re roll ones and say, uh, ones and twos. Mm-hmm. It helps. I'm not a mathematician, but uh, get uh, fucked. Hey, I tried to assassinate on nines once; did not work out too well. Uh, yes, yes. That was a sad day. Was Anyways. Sad day. Uh, um, so, uh, Jeff, do you have an example of Bat Theory Machine? Um, <clears throat> I could definitely uh, offer up the uh, Gristle 1 list I was playing before Evolutionary <laughs> Elementalism. Why is that? Uh, not that the list is bad, per se. Uh, it's your typical Shankweiler, uh, Warders, Long Riders, Fenblades, Double Kithgar, Stone Stripe Chronicler. Sure. Uh, Pyre, Storm, and uh, Max Grillstone with UA. Yep. Um, and the list is supposed to deal with Cricks, and largely it does. Um, but it really struggled with uh, the the Negros. With the Denegros. And, either? Uh, yeah, I think either one could definitely okay. be an issue. And uh, Gorshade 3. Okay. So in the list of defense, uh, when it when it came out, Gorsha three did not exist. Yeah. Um, it the list did have the benefit of being able to deal with uh, the armor and the infantry versions of Crix, like okay, pretty well. So like with that list, like I mean, you had one long rider kill like eight guys. Yeah, it was pretty easily. Ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, but the problem, the 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 major shortcoming of the list, and why I eventually bailed on it was just the P. Denegra matchup yep. is atrocious. Sure. Like, P. Denegra backed up by 30 guns is a huge problem. Mm-hmm. Um, so, using that theory machine, how did you come to playing uh, Calandra like, as a response to that? So, I sat down and... It's good start, good start. Yeah, yeah you... you when you're thinking, you want to sit because it's hard. Mm. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so, sat down and was like, Denegra is a huge problem for trolls, and a lot of people in the Northeast play her. Yeah, she's as, one of the more popular casters. Yeah, pl- they play her specifically as a Crix drop. Even though their second list is probably also pretty good versus trolls. Yep. They're, if they have P. Denegra, that's probably what I'm seeing. Yeah. So I need something where those debuffs are not going to get a lot of mileage. Yep. And where the guns, if they're not going to things that have debuffs, are not going to get a lot of mileage either. Okay. How did you circumvent that? So the way I circumvented that was by putting as many of my activations into multiple different pieces. So we're playing zero units mm-hmm. outside the Creel Stone. Yeah. So that each crippling grasp or parasite is only on one model. Yep. It's as cheap as it can be. Yeah. Um, being a, a four point model is and five point models are the best they can do with crippling grasp. Uh huh. And then anything else is highly resilient to any melee or range attacks, thanks to the Creel Stone. So, um, we're also underestimating the fact that everything is AD, mm-hmm. for the most part. So you are in the zone turn one. Yeah. That is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. As as a Crix player now, like, that is bananas. Yeah. Um, if you it go first, you... you pretty much get to aim on turn two, generally. <laughs> which is pretty cool. Oh, God, it's so crazy. Uh, I really like aiming when I'm, like, rat four. Yeah, I heard it helps. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so, a lot of times when, you know, you're at dinner or something like that, you're talking with your buddies outside the shop, um, Theory Machine can be your friend and it can also be your enemy. Yeah. 
So um, what ends up happening more times than not is you hit a lot of corner case situations mm-hmm. where um, it's like, you know, oh, I want to play this list. And then somebody chimes in. It's like, oh, well, you can't beat this. And you always have to take it with a grain of salt because you need to actually analyze what they're saying. And number one, figure out what level of player you are. And that's not in a, in a matter of skill. It's just do you travel or not? Are you going to conventions legitimately? And how many are you going to in a year? Mm-hmm. So if somebody's playing like a wackadoo list, like if you only really compete at your local store and nobody has that list, chances are you're never going to play against that list. Now, that doesn't mean that, that some random guy won't show up to a tournament and bring it. But also, number two, you need to check, is that caster really popular? You know, like you said, when you were planning for Jenny 1, she is super-duper popular in the Northeast. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, at DOI, almost every Crix player had it. Uh, and that list in particular. Yeah. She has a lot of builds, but they brought the gun line. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so with that in mind, it was just insult to injury. You're like, oh, it's a melee orient. I can deal with this. This isn't so bad. Nope. Gun line. Again. Um... And uh, so, with that in mind, like, you know, when somebody's talking about, oh, you don't have an answer for Haley Double Stormwall, well, not only Haley's very popular, but let's go a little bit deeper. How many people actually play that build anymore? Um, I've never seen it on the table. Exactly. So now you start to figure, you know, is this list trendy? Is it popular? Did somebody just win with a convention with it? That'll make people want to play it. Yeah. At least try it, right? So, and this isn't just a tournament pairing either. This is like how you build a list to its final form. Like, uh, understanding your list better too. You know, uh, always play bad matchups, stuff like that. But mm-hmm. Theory Machine, the number one weakness behind it is people think that if I think this, this is going to happen. The number of lists that I've made that I'm like, this is going to be amazing. I put it on the table, and it just trips over itself so hard. Mm-hmm. Our, our Terminus Saren game, I'm like, oh, man, 30 Bane Knights, 30 Mechanothralls. Uh, one of the Mechanothralls is a Scarlock Commander and two Stitch Thralls. And a uh, uh, Ripjaw, or whatever my Warjack points were. I think it was four. Four or five. Yeah. I, I used my Warjack points on an Arc Node. I'm like, this is going to be amazing. It's awesome. I had no Tartarus, so I wasn't hitting shit. I had no match fixer, so I was just running forward. Yep. Like, granted, Cricks can do that, but I, I realized that the list wasn't as good as I thought it was. Yeah, you were, before that game, you were super pumped to play Terminus. I still am. Mm-hmm. I just, I think that I gotta, I gotta find some jank with him. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, like, before that, you, you were like, I'm playing Terminus this weekend, this tournament, it's gonna be great. And then I played Gatsby 2 four times. Yeah. And he, he wasn't even on my tray. He wasn't even on your tray. Um, I I've kind of changed gears a little bit. Obviously, mm-hmm. like you just said, uh, I'm uh, I'm actually really excited to play uh, Witch Coven. Mm-hmm. Um, mainly due to the fact that I think that they're complicated enough to keep me interested. Sure. And always finding like a new way to win the game. Mm-hmm. And um, just not played. Well, you're going to have to find new ways to win the game, because they are not as good as Lich 2. Oh, Lich 2 will be, will be the pairing. Oh, okay. But like like we said before, I won't be able to play Lich 2 every single round, every tournament. Most of the time, no. Oh my god, he's so good. Anyways. Super good. Um, And he's like a 15-16? Mm-hmm. Oh god. That's a super sweet stat line. He's got, yeah, he's got a POW 15 for no fucking reason. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if the feat needs to be changed again. I don't think so. It's so stupid. It's pretty good. Like, uh, I don't know. Do you really think it's, it's like, still game-breaking? I just... I don't... Uh, it doesn't feel right. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I never want to put the nerf bat on myself. Mm-hmm. But, like, I don't... Every other reincarnation feat in the game, something needs to still be alive in the unit. I understand that they make solos, mm-hmm. but like 
it, so it disregards that. That's fine. I mean, Gorsuch too makes solos as well. Uh, well, yeah, actually, yeah, that's true. Huh? I don't know. Maybe I'm just I'm still getting used to uh, being overpowered. Yeah, yeah, it's cricks. Your models are just better. Yeah. Don't like the number of times like when I because uh, I went to Captain Con last year, and I borrowed uh, Danny Barboza of Cobra Kai. Uh, I borrowed his cricks, and uh, I played. Terminus Gatsby 2. Sure. And uh, I had Raiders in my uh, in my Terminus list, and uh, I was like, uh, I don't I don't really know what to do with them. And then uh, my buddy Alex Straub, uh, he was just like, you just, just literally just run them forward. I was gonna ask, did he tell you to move forward? Yeah, like like we joked around about it, like haha, yeah yeah, run forward, but like no really. I was like, well, but I really want to get work out of them. He's like, it doesn't matter if you get work out of them. I mean, you that will. was. That was a really hard concept for me to accept, was the fact that you, you might not get work out of this, and it doesn't matter. Hmm. Um, so uh, I think it was two episodes ago, um, you talked about how you know coming into Legion and activating a Shepherd felt like unlimited power. Yeah, godlike. I, I had one moment at the tournament. It was actually against Matt Fay. Mm-hmm. Um, he came up with his Nis, and he shot my Bane Thralls. Sixes to hit, sixes to kill. Pretty pretty good, but he still needs sixes. He just goes blah, 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 blah. Pretty much hits almost all of them. Mm-hmm. Kills almost all of them. Sure. I don't make a tough check. If I do, he's smart. He's not, you know, he got to, he got to the final round for a reason. He attacks uh, again. Attacks again, right? Yeah. Um, well, he knows that they got the auto get up and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, so I have maybe four, three Bane Thralls left. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man... That really sucks. It does suck. You just lost like two thirds of a unit. Yeah, and I'm like, man, they were they weren't cheap either. They were a lot of points. Eleven points. And then uh, I'm like, oh, I have a bile throw there. Mm-hmm. So I was like, um, to be the bile throw, walk up, purge. Yep. So you get to took- trade your unit for a unit, but then you get your unit back. Yeah. For a little bit on your feet turn. It was one of those like I'm. I was just like, wow, I just I just picked up a unit in this, mm-hmm. and the entire game I'm sitting there like, man, how am I gonna deal with them? They're death fifteen. Tartarus can only curse one thing. Yep. Like, ugh, I need sevens with curse. That's that's not great. Um, and then I was like, ooh, I killed oh, yes. nine of them. No big deal. Um, yeah. Um, but uh. Yeah, so uh, I don't really have anything with Theory Machine. Do you? Um, Put it on the table. I don't think so. Uh, That'd be my biggest advice. Yeah, definitely. Playing something is going to give you a lot more to think about than just thinking about it. Exactly. Um, and uh, the other thing, I guess, would to, to summarize it was just take it with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, have a backup plan. More times than not, if you try to cover too many things, you end up only having one plan for each one of those things. And then if one of those fails, you're just up shit's creek. Um, but, uh, so what, what was next? Uh, so next up, we have caster stagnation, stagnation, which kind of ties into, uh, ADR of it. So Jeff, you came up with this topic. Why'd you want to talk about it? Yeah, so this is something kind of like floating around in the Trollblood Facebook group right now, Mm -hmm. which I read pretty frequently. Uh, And so right now, trolls are kind of at a point where the same casters now are getting played over and over. Sure. And I feel like complaining about it is a bit of a trap. (laughs) Okay. At the end of the day, if you want something to be in Masters, you have to put it there. Yeah, agreed. And I really feel like, for Trolls anyway, the amount of casters you can do well with is a pretty sizable amount of them. Sure. Um, when we're yeah, talking, pretty stable. Yeah, when we're talking about being able to play... Uh, like Runes of War or Me Mountain, and then pairing that with 
something like Grim Two, Grim One, Calandra. That's a lot of options. That's sure. more than a, a good amount of factions have. Like, I mean, talk to any Kador player. But even like you kind of even shoehorned yourself there a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. So you just said Meat Mountain Ruins, but then you get even deeper. You got Borka Two now. You got Doomy Two. Yep. I mean, Charlie. Um, what what sort does Charlie play out of? Um, I'd I'd say complete strategist. In, complete strategist. In sure. Um, I mean, he he's he played Doomy Two forever. Yeah. You know, won hardcore tournaments with him. Won regular tournaments with him. Like he he's I mean, lights out. Like, and he, he does a similar thing that the Me Mountain and Runes Award do. Yeah. And Trolls like, are in a really good spot right now where yeah. you can, you, as long as you're building towards an archetype, yeah, you can definitely do well. I mean, but like, even before, when people would joke about Trolls, like, oh, haha, Gunbjorn, him and Double Highwayman now is legit. Oh, yeah. Like, whoa. You'll, you'll definitely be able to build that for some decent matchups to exactly. pair well with something. So I agree with you that trolls are in a great spot right now. Mm-hmm. But like, there are factions that aren't. What? Um, what? Uh, if you had to pick one, what would it be? I think uh, Kador players are really feeling the struggle right now. Why do you think that is? Um, <clears throat> every. Well, I mean, I feel like they've been a little absent from Masters lately. Sure. I mean, they started off Mark II maybe stronger than anyone with uh, Iron Flesh. Yep. Uh, that spell just like won games. Just, just cast it. I win. Yeah. And now, whenever you see them, it really feels kind of like they're just riding on the back of Butcher Three almost. Sure. Not, not to say that like no Kador players going is winning just because of Kador Three, but it's Kador Three. <laughs> Butcher Three. <laughs> uh, he put the faction on his back. Right. Uh, but it, it's really hard to find a player that doesn't have Butcher Three in the pairing. Sure. Um, I mean, I mean uh, using Charlie as an example again, um, I mean, he's kind of like the mad scientist that we just know, and whenever we get to talk to him, it's always like eye-opening about these wonky, wonky lists he pulls out. He puts them on the table, and he's, he's an example of good theory machine, where, like, he puts it on the table, and it blows your mind away. But for him, like, when I watch him play Kador, you know, he'll play Irisk 2 and Peace Orsha. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very much trial and error for Charlie. For, oh yeah. Oh yeah. For every for every good idea you see, there's probably like five in the chamber. <laughs> where you're like, Charlie, just just go home. <laughs> Rush through that with five bullets, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sometimes you win, anyways. Um. So, uh, but I I agree with you, and it it kind of blows me away a little bit, because at the end of the day, you could just I mean, source of two. I still feel is one of the top warcasters in the game. I I get I feel like I've just never seen a good source of two player. Then I I I just I I've never seen. She has I feel the most either fifty fifty or sixty forty matchups mm-hmm. out of almost any caster in the game. I guess that's fair, um, but I think like, in the two list pairing that that's just not very important. Oh, I think that's insanely important. I don't know. I like, I guess like getting a good amount. A fifty fifty is like is good. So, like I'm not gonna I, say getting like decent matchups is bad, but it seems really easy to me that factions generally have a play style that they play. Sure. So if you uh, play something that has the ability to deal with the most popular play style in a faction, and then can deal with elements of like what of like potential skews that they might bring. Hmm. That's generally going to be good enough, I feel. So, don't you feel that your pairing right now kind of does that, though? Does what? So, your Runes of War is your, your, your 60-40 matchup almost every time? Sure. And then when it's not, you play Calandra. Yeah, I feel... I get. I guess. Um... Like, I, I would agree... Like, Mostly, from my experience, most people, even if you talk to them a little bit about their lists, it's typically, let's be honest, they have their favorite caster, mm-hmm. and then they have their quick drop. Sure. So that's fine. And it's just, that's a general term, but really just infantry spam answer. And uh, 
that that that's perfectly fine. But I I feel like that's been the mentality for a very long time. Right. Is I like get get that blanket quote unquote power caster, and then have like uh I have a zig and a zag. So something that does like completely the opposite of what the original list does. And I don't I don't know if that's successful or not. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But that seems to be the way that people build a list pair. All right, so I, I can see where you're coming from then. So you're looking to use Sorcia 2 as like a foundation? Exactly. And then your second or third caster, if you're playing Iron Gauntlet, is going yep. to just augment her matchups. Exactly. And it's either going to be designed to like funnel pairings into her or just like pick up your loose ends. So a really funny one that um, I don't understand why people don't play this every single game of every single day mm-hmm. is uh, Butcher 2. That tier is still dumb. It is pretty good. Um, typically, I mean, a lot of factions literally still to this day don't have an answer for it. Mm-hmm. And the worst part about it is is that anything that's going to... So let's say uh, Haley 2 Stormwall mm-hmm. is the answer to that, right? Or at least this person's answer to that. Sure. Um, they're going to walk up. They're going to covering fire. They're going to keep their Stormwall alive, yada, yada, yada. Sorcerer 2 rips a storm wall off the table mm-hmm. very easily. So now we talk about the zig and the zag. Kator, they have, I, I mean, uh, it's weird because if I really had to say a faction that has the most 50-50s, I'm going to say men off. Sure. Just because of their flat denial. Yeah. But with Kator, they're just, they're so all comers all the time. And moving to your point, I feel if there's any reason they get stagnant, that's the reason why. Mm-hmm. Because they just you bring these casters, you have your sixty forties. That's why people I feel are playing Butcher so much. Number one, because he's still new ish. Yeah, he's like he's, he's yeah he's been around for what like a year now. Um, it'll be a year in at Gen Con. Okay, right? like so. Um, not even. So I mean, you got you got people like myself that are playing Gatsby too. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's been around for a lot longer. Yeah. And um, so I don't think he's going anywhere. Personally, I don't think he's that good. He, you kind of have to do like mental like gymnastics when playing against him a little bit. Yes. Um, just because like his threat is so strong. Yep. Like, uh, uh, we saw one game this weekend. Uh, Derek was playing against Butcher Three. Yep. And he left a model in the zone uh, and triggered a Corbeau move. Like, normally, you put models in zones, right? Yep. But just, like, one little thing like that, Butcher gets Corbeau move, three extra inches, done. Mm-hmm. Game over. And that's super weird. Especially against Kator. Mm-hmm. But it's one of those, like, he has been out for almost a year. So people have talked about the one or two tricks he can do. Yeah. And past that, if you know that, he doesn't do anything for his army. Yeah. That's where you start to get those casters that really blow up. Why is why does Haley 2 have so many builds? Because her things don't really target. Yeah. So, like, I mean, uh, I, they don't have to be friendly faction. So, like, she can dead-eye uh, just anything. So she can she can... Builds herself so many different ways. D cell still protects them, right? Mm-hmm. Just double checking that real quick. Probably, probably. Yeah, close enough. Her feet protects them. You know what I mean? It doesn't say friendly faction, yeah. so it allows for a lot of design space when you're building your list. So, um, when you have somebody like Butcher Three, literally, it's who can solicit Butcher Three. Let him go hog wild, like just bananas, mm-hmm. and. I've just found so many times that Butcher 3 has to get frisky. He has to come up. He has to start casting Flashing Blade. Yeah. Like, his army just does not get it done. And then he dies. Yeah. My game plan against Butcher 3 pretty much never changes. What's that? Uh, since I'm dropping Calandra into him, sure. my plan is always kill the entire army. Yep. Because they have no mat fixing. They have no POW fixing. Yep. So it's just Iron Fang Pikeman under Starcross. It doesn't end well for Iron Fang Pikeman. It does not. So 
uh, once his 20 infantry models are dead, he has a warjack and him. Yep. The warjack uh, tends to die fairly easily, or well, yeah, when you have slags, just never, just never relevant because the slags will just kill it. Mm -hmm. So it just toes into his zone. And then Butcher comes in, kills like six, seven beasts, and then I feet, and we kill Butcher. Yeah. And if it was something like uh, I rusk two, I rusk one, uh, Butcher one, I'm looking to play a significantly longer and more difficult game. Yep. Uh, just because they bring tools to make their infantry so much better. Exactly. But these casters don't see a lot of play. Why do you think that is? Uh, I think the ability of something like Butcher 3 to gotcha and that? pick up easy wins is yep. a big deal. Even though I don't... I think once you climb higher and higher, uh, you're going to need to rely less on gotchas. Sure. Um, not only that, um, those casters you listed after Butcher 3, they require you to play the long game. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, especially, what did I say earlier? The American meta wants the game over by turn three. They want to be either in a completely dominating position, mm -hmm. where, like, I have to clear the zone to win the game, or they want to be killing your caster. Typically, in my experience, when you get to turn four, people don't know what to do. Yeah. That, uh, I, I feel, is where the experienced players come out. That's definitely uh, something I've noticed. Um, at, at the tournament we just went to, like I said before, I didn't have an easy game mm -hmm. the entire time. Um, a perfect example was uh, Shane, when I played Shane. Um, he played Iron Mother, and that's a real problem for me. He had Ground Pounder, he had an AoE 4 gun, he had, you know, lucky shots, he had everything just under the sun. And guys were coming back with the Enigma Foundries. Mm -hmm. I couldn't really reach them, and we had to play a knockdown, just slog. And, you know, I'm looking at the table, and I have one Bane Knight, one Blood Witch, like, mm -hmm. and I'm just, I, I need to piece together a turn that, you know, I look at the table, I have a Heavy and an Enigma Foundry in my zone. The Heavy's messed up a little bit, maybe like half dead if I remember right. Yeah. And exactly. I need to, I need to, rem I need to decide whether I'm going to feed or not. That's a, that's a big decision. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I have a couple Bane Thralls, I have the Raider Captain, I can Parasite the Heavy, mm, you know what, I'm not going to feed. Yeah. The dice cooperate, and we, we talked about it later, he says, oh yeah, if you feed, you lose that game. And I sit on the other side of the table, I'm like, huh, I wonder why that is. He floods the zone with models, I can't clear him out. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, that would have, like, thank God, right? Mm -hmm. So... I mean, it was that that was a perfect example of him being the more experienced player, never checking himself out of the game, even if maybe he wasn't in a disadvantageous disadvantageous position, never checking himself out, always in the game. If I feed it, that would have been a fatal mistake an hour and 20 minutes into the game. You know, I, I had a lapse in judgment, and he takes advantage of it and snatches that game away from me. Yeah, watching that game... Um, I, it got to that point, and at the start of that turn, I go in my head, if Riker feeds here, then, like, we're pretty much done, mm -hmm. and if he doesn't feed, that's when we know he's a good Kirk's player now. Oh, thanks. Yeah, and you did it, buddy. Did it. Got my Tonka truck medal. Yep. <laughs> good for you. Oh, dude, that, that tournament was a nightmare. The second he put Polarity Shield in the Hyperion, I was like, fuck. Did you forget he had hype, uh, Polarity Shield? No, you reminded me before the game. Okay. I just thought maybe, like, he thought I was going to be, like, a super janky player and put it on Ron and, uh, like, run him up. And I was like, oh, please, for the love of God, just do it. <laughs> 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 just give me this. Just, just, come on, just give me this. Like, <laughs> I, just I just played one of the hardest games I've ever had to play against Shane. And I just, just, come on, give me one gimme. Why can't I just be Zek for five minutes? Uh, why can't I run my blood hag up, bile throw purge against a unit of errants with Harbinger, and my opponent just scoops? At like 4 a.m. they scoop. God damn it. 
that blah, 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 rage, rage, rage. Anyways, um, but uh, yeah. So um, what were we talking about? Um, you not stagnation. Eating. Yeah, that too. So when I look at Cricks, uh, um, really funny enough, you don't see like any of the casters. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean. Every, cra- do, every like, caster in Crix is, like, good, right? Like, Yes. Yes. Um, it was hilarious because, like, I, I, I'm on Twitter a lot. And um, uh, you can follow me at DanielRiker1. Nerd. And uh, you fuck yeah, dude. I was pissed I couldn't get my name. I had to put a one next to it. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? Holy shit is Daniel Riker. I'll fight him for the name. Whatever. Let's go. Um, but uh, please, if you are, you have Daniel Riker, just the name. <laughs> I would prefer not to fight you. You can, you can have it. Um, but He's anyways, a big dick meta guy asking people for Twitter yeah, handles. Right. Like, come on, man. <laughs> big, just swinging it around. Anyways, um, and uh, I was watching as some people are at Adepticon right now, and uh, they were playing the spell draft, and uh, they're like, "Oh man, this cast is pretty good." And then uh, I forgot who I saw. They had Denny too, and uh, they they laid down the, the spells that they drafted. And they're like, "Huh, that's a pretty good Denny too, right?" I'm like. I mean, her spell list is pretty good already. I don't like the Denegra 2 spell list. I don't know. I, I feel like, outside of Pursuit, I just kind of feel underwhelmed. Hellmouth is fucking amazing. Oh, yeah, I forgot uh, about that spell. Never mind. Curse of Shadows is fucking amazing. It's fine. I don't know. Like When I run past your unit, it's it's pretty good. I don't know. Crippling Grasp is just so good. I'm not saying it's not, but then, like, Feet's better than Crippling Grasp. I mean, do you think the Negro one would be better if you switched their spell cards and kept the feet? Uh, no. Okay. Do you think I, the Negro two would be better with the Negro one spell list? Yep. All right. I mean, that's just what I'm getting at. Uh, just because she can minus two speed mm-hmm. on top of the already hard scenario pressure. Yeah. So, like, run a run an arc node turn one, mm-hmm. shoot crippling grasp. Boost it, because who cares? Imagine body and soul with crippling grass. No. Please? I will not. I am so glad body and soul exists as is, because the first time I read it, it was the Negro one. <laughs> <laughs> Parasite on that, and crippling grass on that. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That would be so good. Right? Matt I... Seven Drudges. For like an hour, I was just like, I didn't fuck. Like, how do I, like, <laughs> I got what do I do? <laughs> I got nothing. Like, I'm done. War Machine's dead. <laughs> Moving Game on. Over, man. I mean, it's still pretty bad, but. I don't know. I, I don't think it's as bad as everyone says. I agree. And this is like a perfect example of uh, like Theory Machine gone wrong, right? Yep. Time back into that. Like, everyone's prepping for Body and Soul now. Who's actually playing Body and Soul? Um, so what's really funny, uh, well, number one is nobody. Yeah. Uh, it costs a little, I, I, I priced it out. It, it's pretty pricey. Mm-hmm. One unit of drudges is like 50 bucks. And that, that list plays like three. That's a lot of money. It is. On top um, of the like $100 Bane Knight units. Uh, $85? I don't know, man. Doesn't matter. Um, but, uh, plus the Sepulix Overlord guys. Mm-hmm. Number one, good luck finding them. They're they're actually pretty hard to find even online. Yeah. And then if you get them, they're not cheap, obviously. Um, I was talking to Dan about this on uh, if you have them, if you have like assembled or painted uh, of these units, you can actually sell them for like eighty percent MSRP on like Barter Town and stuff. Holy crap! So like, if you bought them from like Discount Games, you're making money. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Right. That's pretty cool. I mean, they don't care. They're still getting them. They're still getting money. Well, yeah, I mean, DJI doesn't care, but uh, they don't have them now. Yeah. And you do. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Now who's yeah. on top? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Got them. Um, but, uh, you know, just, just going down the list, I mean, more times than not, when you look at the Crix players, like, they're playing Denny 1, Denny 2, Gatsby mm-hmm. 2. Um, Gorshay 3 got huge popularity spike. Yeah. Similar to the the Butcher 3, because he just had gotchas. Yeah. Um, His gotcha's pretty good as well. It is. It is. I I don't know if it's better. Um, Uh, I don't think it is, but, I mean, inherently it's better because it's ranged. I think it's cooler. 
Like being like a get spell it? slinger get is super it? sweet. Yeah, I got it. Don't worry. I I did it. Because the stationary. Because the station. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. I'm right there. Just want to take a moment. That's all. <laughs> Whatever you want, man. This is your podcast. Right. Cheers, dude. Shut up. Uh, um. I mean, I am the big dick meta guy now because yeah. of our game, but yeah. No, see, it's yours. <laughs> Oh, man, didn't make a Masters this year yet, so I don't know, dude. It's looking like you. I mean, I've only made one. <laughs> right? Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the the Siphon Bolt's really cool, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I never really felt like it was a solid assassination. Um, I've died to it. Yeah, well, when Steve Klein of Dragon's Den Poughkeepsie... God damn. Rolls triple box cars. Will you stop name dropping? No, I will not. Right. He knows what he did. He was like, oh man, double cap crack and I'm in. And then like the cab did some work and then the soul hunters did some work and then he feats and you're like, I got, what was it? Two transfers? Two transfers. Two transfers. He's like, all right, boom, siphon bolt. It's like some damage. You're like, okay. I have and then, to transfer this. Yep. And then he's like, okay, I'll shoot you again. You're like, okay. And he takes it. And then he's like, <laughs> you're dead. Like eighteen, like, uh. yeah. <laughs> but um, all right. So we've established that caster stagnation exists, right? Sure. People like latch on to casters, then they play them, they make masters, and then other people see those casters, they latch onto them, they play them, and the more, cycle continues. I agree. That's more card sinking mentality, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, like all the time, people grab the same seventy-five. Yep. That the last guy did it. Like the last PTQ. Mm-hmm. So now I have to ask: Is this a problem? Like, do you think this is bad for War Machine? So no. Okay. Um, Defend yourself. I think you'll disagree with me. Yes. Um, so at the end of the day, um, like this isn't just caster stagnation, but that divide and conquer and character restriction. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still have the same viewpoint on all three. Um, we, for the most part, almost all of us are adults that play this game. We, you know, yes. technically, I said a ma- so a majority, mm-hmm. and uh, we all work very hard for our money. We chose to buy the models. I don't care what you play. Mm-hmm. Whatever you put across the table from me, I don't care if Gorman is in every list because mm-hmm. you know what? There's a good. There's a fifty-fifty shot. In a regular Masters, that I'm going to run into Gorman anyways. Yeah. If I didn't have an answer for Gorman, why am I playing this game when I knew that it was a possibility I was going to play against him? Not not a hundred percent answer, right? Mm-hmm. Just but something that can deal with something. It. Correct. You know, if you want to play Epic Iris on every single one of your lists, okay, I don't have an issue with it. If you want to play Haley two every single round, you. Like I said before, you had literally you could have done anything in the world other than come to this specific store and play this g- game against me. Play whatever toys you want. I'm going to kill her. Like I'm going to try my best to win that game no matter what's across the table from me. And personally, I think caster stagnation is hand in hand with character restriction and divine conquer. You think the two feed off each other? Yes, I think that the reason why the, the, it, the casters are so stagnant is because, number one, you need to play the caster one time in almost every tournament. Mm-hmm. So you're going to see more power casters because they're going to have more good matchups. Sure. And number two, uh, character restrictions, it c- cuts off design space because, um, like Molg, you know, you have te- 12 different lists you love to see Molg in. Sure. Like and you know what? Exactly. And you know what? Maybe is it? I personally, I don't think it's the end of the world to see Mog across the table. No, I don't. I don't think so. Um, I mean, I, so I'm at a point where I'm pretty fortunate in that character restrictions doesn't really affect me. Agreed. Um, like I have my Trollblood pairing, um, mm-hmm. which while Janissa would be, uh, I'm sure, very frustrating in evolutionary elementalism. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, no one wants to be attacking defense 14 under Starcross. But it would be one less light. Yeah, it'd be one less light. So Big deal, right? I can't guarantee I would make that change. 
Mm-hmm. See? I mean, I get to... Uh, I And I also have, like, a singleton point, so I don't have anything good that slots in there. Exactly. Uh, but Runes of War, obviously, wouldn't really change. Uh, mm-hmm. There's no characters you're looking to fit in. No. But what I, I would gain a, the ability to play a third list. I'd yes. be a lot more interested in uh, something like Iron Gauntlet, mm-hmm. where... Um, I could, like, build something, like, cool. I mean, I could play, like, some Grim 2 shenanigans right yeah. now, but I wouldn't really want to. Wouldn't, I wouldn't really enjoy it that much. The number of times that I've seen an Iron Gauntlet pairing or old-style Masters pairing, where it's, like I said before, my favorite caster, it's my blanket guy, my quick strap, and then literally it's almost always jank. Mm-hmm. It's some skewy, garbage... Just hope I can get it out of the way list, mm-hmm. like round one. And why? Why do people see that as competitive? Yeah. If I came, if I come to a Magic tournament, War Machine is always compared to Magic on the level of competitiveness, For and reasons. I have to play exactly, and I have to play three different decks. I can play the same damn cards in each one of those decks. Yeah. So why? Why is this different? Why is it the end of the world if I have anything in my list? And I mean, like, I'm not going to go on the bandwagon and just say, you know what, my favorite format, per- personally, would be uh, time turns with one list, 15 points of specialist. Sure. I think that that would be great. It, it, it changes the construction of your list. I've found more times than not. Some people, it, they, they're just, they're proficient enough with their list, they can play whatever they want. I watched Tom Hoffman play Doom Reaver spam in uh, in hardcore mm-hmm. at TempleCon, and it blew me day. away. It blew me away. He's activating what fifty six something like that Doom Reavers in seven minutes. It's crazy. Per- perfect spacing. It, it it blew my mind. I, I you know I watched a, a Peace Guard player play, play seventy five models, no problem. Saying go with like two minutes left. Like granted, he's just running forward, but. I mean, he's making sure he's out of blast. He's making sure, you know, Scar is safe. He's like, poof, I was ridiculous. I mean, even if we're talking about, like, two seconds to run every model, yeah. like, it adds up. It does. It, it's two, that two seconds is probably, like, sloppy. Yeah. If you're not incredibly well-versed in the list. Exactly. Um, so, I don't know. How do, you, how do you feel about my opinions about the stagnation being hand-in-hand with the characteristics on the DNC? I'm not totally convinced that removing DNC and uh, character restrictions really changes anything about what casters people bring. Okay. Um, I think a lot of the mentality is that people are doing well in Masters with these lists, so to get the best odds, I should be playing these lists. I think part of that is just we're in the information age. Okay. Uh, you never saw this before, uh, with like big tournament games before the internet was out. Everyone's talking. Mm-hmm. So, but I, War Machine's also never really not been in the information age per se. Like, sure, sure. The the internet's always been here. We've always had the ability to talk to each other. Mm-hmm. And as the game matures progresses and the community shifts harder towards competition. Yeah. Everyone's going to be playing what gives them the best odds to win. Mhm. I mean, there's really no reason not to. So, I agree with you, but where were you going with that? Um <clears throat> I think the like just those things existing at the same time as this doesn't necessarily means that if one goes away, so will the other. So I, I think it's just a a cultural or community thing more than anything sure. else. I I feel like we need to step up and like so like you were saying before. Um, I agree with you, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but when somebody gets a gotcha, mm-hmm. maybe they look at it not as a gotcha but as a win. And then they're just going to keep playing it because they're winning with that list, mm-hmm. not the way that they're winning. And so, um, 
my big thing is that if, if I go to a Masters and, like, let's say, let's use Adepticon Masters as an example. Sure. Uh, first of all, I, obviously, I want to congratulate Jay Larson. I mean, he, he did use your, your troll pair, which is pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, it's cool. To watch it, to watch it do that well. Um, and uh, he, his opponent was locked into Scar 1. Now, I, I, I'm using this as an example, and I don't mean to have the same effect. But if I'm in Jay's shoes... And let's say my opponent really wanted to play Gatsby 2 into the matchup. Mm -hmm. I don't see an issue with that. I want to beat my opponent at his best. I understand that he... They both went into that tournament understanding that it was DNC 1. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that it's not the Crix player's fault for not dropping Scar 1 into one of his matchups. If he wanted to play Gatsby 2 into the matchup. For all I know, he loves Scar into Calandra. Mm-hmm. Who knows? I, psh, I can't tell. I can't tell you guys. Um, but if if Gatsby two was his, his drop, I, I I always want to beat my opponent at his best. So I have a problem with that. Sure. Um, if you sit down with your opponent in the finals and you go, let's not play by the rules this time, and your so, opponent so, goes, okay, that's not really fair to the other six or like so, 14 whoa, 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 Back up, back up. In no way, shape, or form, I'm saying they do that right now. I'm saying that would be a reason to remove DNC. Oh, okay, sure. For future tournaments. I said both of them walked into the tournament understanding the conditions, so they had to follow them. Mm-hmm. So he, he's not, um, it's not, oh, it's, he understood it, so it is his fault for being locked in. And yeah, I don't want them to be like, yeah, because that, I agree. It screws over everybody else. Why does everybody else have to play by the rules if we don't have to? Mm-hmm. But, I, I mean, I would use that as an argument to remove it. Sure. Um, and I would even be happy if we removed one of the two, either DNC or character restrictions. Mm-hmm. I just feel like it would really spice up the game. Sure. At I the know. same time, I agree with you on that whole people, if they're looking towards competitive – they're they're always like you're you, you know you might always see Tartarus on the table then, mm-hmm. right? So that'll happen. You might always see Winterguard Death Star again. You know that might make a comeback. Um, but my big thing is is that like when people are always like you know the very you know pro DNC and pro character restrictions, I just I have a hard time agreeing with them when in a five round tournament the guy can play Haley two four of those rounds. Does that last round really matter? I mean, theoretically, that last round is probably like the most important. Maybe, right? But now he's just going to play a super duper skew list mm-hmm. as his other list. I mean, using an example, and it worked very well for him. Uh, uh, Trevor Atridge. Just this is a name drop episode. All right. Yes. Uh, he you, played man. last last year. He played Haley Two and Darius. It was Darius Double Stormwall. Mm-hmm. And he sat down and he was like, what are the... He practiced it and he was like, what can I drop Darius into to get him out of the way, basically? And he, he got him out of the way and then he played Haley 2 the rest of the day. I don't understand how that's an argument for pro DNC. At the end of the day, I'm not convinced that Divide and Conquer and character restrictions make the game better sure i personally have a lot of faith in the way privateer press balances their game and designs their models agreed um obviously that faith is not always rewarded Mm -hmm. but more often than not i find it is and there aren't a lot of structural flaws i feel with the game Mm -hmm. there are a very small amount of characters that i think would ever truly need to be restricted in some way Sure. And I'm not even sure I feel that something like Gorman needs to be. Um, mm. He's super good, but yeah. like you said before, you have a 50% chance of seeing Gorman, and there's no way Gorman's not going to be useful against you. Yep. So, I mean, you really have no reason to believe that they're not going to drop their list with Gorman if you really feel like that piece houses you. Agreed. Um, <clears throat> so... I guess just, like, I really don't think the game breaks if you remove 
character restrictions and divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. And I think removing those gives the game a little more legitimacy when viewed as a competitive game. Agreed. Uh, Obviously, Magic has a banned or restricted list for a large amount of its formats. Yep. Um, They understand that their game is not perfect, but... At the same time, the card pool in something like that is so much larger. It's a lot easier for something to sneak in. Yeah, an interaction they didn't think about. Yeah, and just because, uh, like, that ga- that is another game that has a uh, meta game. Yep. And adding cards into it can sometimes shift it more than they intend to. Mm-hmm. And it's really hard for models to do that in the same way. Yeah. So when you're looking at the game that Private to Your Press builds, because of the lower pool to draw from, it's a lot easier to see these interactions. And frankly, I don't think there's anything that's like killed the game. Mm-hmm. There's been tons of Magic cards that destroy uh, competitive play. Yep. And they receive bans and restrictions fairly quickly. So, I mean, at the end of the day, there's a reason we're playing War Machine and we're not playing Magic competitively, mm-hmm. right? So there's that. Um, plus, I mean, I'll even play Devil's Advocate for myself really quick. Sure. My big thing is is that I can see the counter-argument where people would say, literally, you're only going to see Haley 2, you're only going to see Denegra 1, Gatsby 2. And at the end of the day, my, my final argument for that is, what would be different? Mm-hmm. Nothing. When I look at a Twitter feed of a convention... If it's a Signar matchup, Haley 2 is being played. It's yeah. Haley 2 versus this, Haley 2 versus that. Yeah. You're gonna and, uh, and, and if she's not being played, she's most likely, like, nine times out of ten, she's the second list. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah she's yeah. going to be there. But and, that's, you know, that's a small bubble. Yeah. Like, for that faction. But you can do it with every faction. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, it's a Legion player? Where's his Veil 2 list? Like, you know, it, it's fine. Because those casters are really good. Mm-hmm. And they can be really good, and that's fine. But you know what's really cool? When you can put Typhon in both your lists. Maybe that guy plays Veil 1, Veil 2 with Typhon in both. Mm-hmm. Like, like, that's just... It's different. Uh, like, who who's not playing Fist of Halak Mordecai right now? It's, it's hard to argue against it, right? Yeah. If you want to win a convention, that's just a flat good pairing. And you know what? Tiberian wants to be in both those lists. Yeah, I think you can definitely make an argument to see him in both. And and the fact is is that what's great, I think, I mean, we have no sway on anything, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't <laughs> actually matter. A single-digit podcast. Anyways, um, but uh, I mean, I just think that it would drastically affect list construction in a positive manner. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you'll get people that are playing those janky casters. Why? Because they can play all the characters. Yeah. How are you going to feel when you can play Ruin in both lists? Probably pretty good. Pretty like good. The best Warjack in the game. Yep. Um, you know, just anything you can think of that, that would just be, you know, amazing as a character. I mean, what's going to happen when I can play Drag Race as a turn support guy and another list for, for Soul Hunters? Well, I mean, so, like, what if we just take away character restrictions for everyone but Kriggs? I mean, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but but I like Death Jack. I'm he's, sure you do. I don't, a, I don't like Death Jack. Why don't you like Death Jack? He's Death 13. Just shoot him. It, it, I, did you not hear the number <laughs> 13? <laughs> Is that the magic number for you? I mean, it's it's higher than 11. Am I am I gonna make an entire Def Thirteen army and you're just gonna pull your hair out? Well, I mean, no, because like I'll aim or like force <laughs> blow you or something. Exactly. But, like Def Thirteen is just too high on an armor nineteen <laughs> heavy. Like, Don't worry, he can't heal, bro. He can. I, yeah, that he was can, a joke. He can. Was, it's not okay. It's not, not okay. okay. Good thing he I doesn't cast crippling grasp, right? Uh, Thank God Ruin can't heal. Good thing he can't Hellmouth. Hellmouth is probably worse. <laughs> Wait, can he Hellmouth? I have no idea. He probably can. I don't think probably. he has the, the cost three thing. Uh, no, no, he gets to spend focus, yeah. Yeah, he... Oh, God. Huh. That's the thing. Thank God Ruin can't heal. 
Thank God I don't play Denny 2, right? I mean, I'd play against it. Yeah. It's a game. Mm. Back to Coven. Uh-huh. I don't know. I think you're going to be underwhelmed with Coven. Why is that? I think their late game is pretty weak. That's why you bring a Kraken. I guess. Like, that is a model. Yeah. That hopefully survives the late game. Yeah. It's I mean, pretty easy for them to survive. It, it all depends on, like, where the late game is, right? Like, sometimes the late game is, like, turn three. I agree. Um, and then sometimes it's, like, turn seven. Mm-hmm. So, uh, right now, I'm thinking um, just, like, flat stupid. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, I'm just doing, uh, like, Coven, Iacos Kraken, and then, like, 30 Bay Knights. All right, I mean... I feel like that can carry me long enough. Yeah, that, that'll that definitely carry you to some wins. Um, and then, uh... Because Tartarus is in Gatsby 2. Is Coven on the ADR? No. Oh, we were going to mention ADR. We want to talk about it a little bit? A little bit. So, okay. um, as a way of... So, at this point, it seems like character restrictions and... Um, while Divide and Conquer is no longer baseline... In it seems to be on, everywhere. It's baseline and Masters. Mm-hmm. So... And the Masters is really, I think, what people want to be playing. Of course. Um, like, you play Steamrollers to get into Masters when mm-hmm. you're at conventions. So, does ADR do enough to spice up which casters are being played? No. No? No. Um, do you think that that's just because of the casters that are on ADR right now? Or do you think that's just because 20 points of specialist is not a strong enough incentive? Um, I think... Now, number one, we can agree that it's still too new. Sure. The people I don't think have like completely unlocked what they can really do with 20 points. Yeah. Um, and number two, I think there's, there's two frames of thinking. Number one, it's really hard to get the right point modules mm-hmm. to a point where you might actually make a sub-optimal list just to be able to sideboard out stuff. Mm-hmm. And number two, a lot of people are just like, just build a 75-point list or whatever, you know what I mean? That does not work. It does not work. Now, for some factions, the the dice fall and they, you know, it all works out. Mm-hmm. But for the most of us, you know, if you don't have a solid one, two-point option that you're okay with taking out of your list, it's really hard unless they're like, exactly 10 point or 11 point things that are easy to swap out. Mm-hmm. Like when we're talking about like switching units out for other units. Yep. Um, it's just like a lot of people just kind of nonchalantly talk about it. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I'll just swap out this for this. And, you know, that might actually negatively affect the list. You know, don't get me wrong. I like the idea of ADR. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, obviously some factions benefited a lot more from it than others. So a good example, like everybody talks about, is trolls. You know, people can play a regular pairing in trolls and just have 20 points of specialists. Yeah. The uh, uh, Doom Shaper 2, Grim 2, it's pretty good. It is. And then you also have access to Jarl and Gunbjorn, who... Uh, Jarl's always been, like, decent. Yeah. And Gunbjorn, with uh, the new releases, has definitely gotten a lot stronger. And can Agreed. stand on his own legs. Um, but, uh, you know, pretty much the only way that I've heard people talk about ADR, like, effectively being used is just either a super, super niche unit. Mm -hmm. So, like, circle swapping in druids for anti-magic against Legion. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, a pureblood for blessed. Or a colossal. Sure. They're just like, I have a colossal in my my sideboard. Can you deal with it? No. Throwing it in there. All right, so ADR instead of um, it's just not a good enough draw, you'd say. So, yeah. all right, so Hungerford and uh, Hacksaw sit down with you, sure, because you're on a podcast. Why not? And they go, okay, we can't change character restrictions and uh, divide and conquer in Masters. Yep. Sure. Um, we take it out for regular steamroller. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
what do you do for that for that ADR? Uh, anything like what do you do to try to attempt to fix? Spice it, it up. St- yeah. Uh, simplest thing in the world. Give them fifteen points of friendly faction specialists. Hmm. Give them twenty points. Just my biggest thing was is that I don't like twenty points. I don't like the Trojan horse colossal. Sure. Where they're just like, it's there. No, it's not. LOL. If you make a colossal and you bring it to a fight, you're committed. Mm-hmm. But my biggest thing, people, what's the number one cast that people always go to? Haley 2. You can't give Haley 2 15 points of specials. You can't give Haley 2 10 points, 20 points of specials. It's broken. That's ridiculous. I agree. But why? Because she has all those utility mercenaries. Mm-hmm. Almost nine times out of ten, what would you see in your, your specialists? You'd see Gorman. You'd see Iris. You'd see, you know, all the usual suspects. Ayana and Holt. Stupid crap like that. And, but if you made them friendly faction, I think that would be huge. What are you swapping in? I don't fucking know. Trencher Commandos. Like, why? I, I have a reason. Like, you would, uh, I think you would see such wacky specialists that come out of nowhere. If they have to be friendly faction. Okay. So, all right, I can get behind, like, friendly faction specialists. I think that's interesting. It's different, right? Yeah. Um, it's not reinforcements. That was crazy. I never that was reinforcements. Basically, it was player cav unit, right? I guess, yeah. Yours is 11, so you never really played it. I like my cav unit, but, yeah. <laughs> um, I, um, I actually never... Um, like really played with reinforcements. Um, yeah, I don't know there, that because um, that that was a variant, right? Or was that baseline? It was. Uh, it it was depending on the scenario. Okay. If it was a flank scenario, you got reinforcements. I never remember deploying. I I I, I must have played with them. I just can't remember it. Maybe it was just that terrible. It was really bad. It was I basically it out. every single flank game. You got a free charge of cavalry. <laughs> hmm. It was just they come on, they charge something, and then they probably die. I mean, I was playing rap uh, legion at the time, so maybe oh, I just always did put uh, raptors. Oh, that would be super good, actually. Let's bring this yeah. back. Oh no! Yeah, Never. like Never. my my speed like nine unit just like saunters on. There's no reason that and they then, need to be speed nine. Like my range twelve guns, turn on. Even better in I'm the list. Like, yeah. All you had to play was Anissa. Yeah. You just ran her forward. They came on. They're like, what, Rat 8 then? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe even Rat 9. I think what? I think they're 7s. Nobody gives a shit. Whatever. Um, weapon Masters all the time against Living? What? No. Oh, yeah, and just Weapon Master on their sword. Yep, that's what I mean. Well, oh, yeah, and then they have Poison Shots, too. Super cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. Everyone's a Weapon Master. Um, all right. I think the Friendly Factions uh, Specialist is interesting. Definitely would shake up the game a little bit, right? Yeah. So even if you have the mercs in your list and you're swapping them out, it's something. Sure. And, you know, maybe it's... Uh, I don't know. I just think it would like be different. Um, I say 15 points because that way you can play any character jack. Sure. Um, like, some of them, you know, Behemoth really in mind is 13. Yeah, that guy's so, maybe probably a little overpriced. So maybe you don't take them all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Only when he's really good, huh? Yeah. Maybe hey. like when you're gonna fight Def Ten heavies and stuff. Yeah. Or colossals. Yeah. Armor Pierce is pretty good. It is pretty good. Um. So uh, yeah, that would be my suggestion. Like Do you it. think you could think of anything to change, drastically change stuff? Hmm. I think without changing, I I do like giving people. Um, flat baseline a specialist that was one of the problems i had with the master's packet when it came out this year i yeah. i really would have liked to see like even like five ten points of specialist for like everyone that wasn't on the adr mm-hmm. i think that'd be super cool um yep. hmm. i don't know I, I mean at the end of the day i don't even really feel it's a problem if everyone wants to play one caster yeah um like it, or if the same casters rather Mm-hmm. So I don't really have a solution. <laughs> Identify problem. End of conversation. Yeah. 
My thing is, is that whenever you talk about specialists, things like Victor Pendrick exist, mm-hmm. and he's he's a, he's okay, right? Yeah. He's pretty good for just two points. And then the matchups he's really good in, he's really good. I think um, if if you're not going to go, if you're not going to fix in the steamroller packet, then you have to fix it by creating models with uh, cool affinities and stuff. I think most of the time, which is what they're doing, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it may eventually get to the point where, like, they're building, like, warjacks and maybe even units that are supposed to interact with, like, specific iterations of warcasters. Like, imagine, like, Ruin, if, like, his affinity was only for, like, Butcher 1 and 2, because but- mm. they feel Butcher 3 is too popular. Hmm. That'd be different, right? Yeah. I mean, I think I think eventually they have to start thinking about it. I think that would be their, their kind of like their own self way of making a mini ban list. Mm-hmm. Instead but, of just banning casters, banning certain interactions. Yeah, I do like ADR because at the end of the day, it incentivizes you for playing uh, specific casters instead of uh, creating negatives for playing other casters. So who who did Zach play that played P Striker in Masters? Uh, Mark Andre LeBlanc. Haha, uh-huh, you had the name drop now. Um, I knew it all along. Ha ha ha. <laughs> you fell for my trap. Um, you got me. So I've never talked I mean, to him. I can't name drop him. <laughs> it work. Too late. Um, so uh, he 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 did ADR very well, right? Mm-hmm. He yes. he thought of a he thought of a way to use it properly. P striker. I'm gonna you know swap in my second colossal. You know forced. Um, Zach was going to play Gatsby too, no matter what, so it didn't matter. Because he's but, Zach. But, um, but at the end of the day, you know, he had an answer for something that, you know, Signar really didn't before. Mm-hmm. Typically, bringing another Colossal against Crix is not very good. Not very good. Especially against Gatsby 2. Mm-hmm. So, him using ADR correctly ended up helping him win the game. Um, so, um... I mean, other than that, I don't, I don't really have anything. How about you, Jeff? Not particularly. So, um, do we have anything planned for our next episode? I don't think so. We're going to attempt once again to get Zach on. I think <laughs> a while ago we like promised to get him on the next week. Probably. Uh, Probably. I, re- I really want to grill him. Yeah. For uh, some stuff. Some stuff. We'll get yeah. into it later. Um, well, that would probably be our Crix episode. Yeah. And um, so. Uh, Jeff, while we're recording, I want to talk to you a little bit. Um, I had an idea. Um, maybe uh, we ha- we have an email, correct? We do. What, what is that email? Uh, it's probably like battledriven.podcast at gmail.com. All right. Um, so either way, even if that's wrong, um, we'll post it on our Facebook. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm going to actually um, I'm gonna ask for a little bit of feedback. Um, I mean, people. Some of some of the people that have listened have messaged me on Facebook. Um, be sure if if you want, you can friend me. And uh, if there's anything you want us to talk about, or if you just want to talk to us about War Machine or really anything, um, uh, I'll I'll open my door and uh, I'll, I'll be I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to talk to you guys. Um, and if there's anything you guys want us to talk about, like a topic or something like that, let us know. And uh, I'm I'm more than happy to oblige. Oh, yeah. Uh, the podcast is, like, the smallest amount of, like, talking about War Machine we do. We're, like, constantly going back and forth over stuff, like, pretty much all day. Pretty much. Like, I know Riker has to keep his phone on silent. Yeah. Because if he doesn't, the, the like, ringing will just kill his battery. It's true. It's I, I, went from, uh, I went from 89% in a four-hour shift at work to 42 because you guys kept pinging me. We're just talking. Son of a bitch. Um, and who? Yeah. So feel free to talk to us. Yeah. And um, I don't know. That sounds like an episode, right? Yeah. If there's anything anyone ever wants to discuss, you can just post it. Or anything you want us to discuss, like on the podcast, you can just post mm-hmm. it on the Facebook. Yep. And uh, we we might just chat about it a little with you there too, and mm-hmm. then uh, discuss it in a little more depth on the podcast. Make sure we get we get the exact topic you actually want to talk about. Yeah. So you're not like, you know, what do you think about this? And we're like, oh, yeah, that. We'll talk about that, not this. 
So we just want to make sure that you guys get what you want. Yeah. But uh, this has been Jeff and Riker. Thanks for listening to episode five of Battle Driven. Laters. 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 Laters.